Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking with a very, 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 very long awaited review. Now, I'm sorry if I'm a bit rusty with the reviews as I haven't done one in a, a bit of a while now. So, I do apologise uh, me doing go uh, saying like uh and um lots of, uh, lots of times in this video as, um, you know, like I said, I haven't done one for ages. So, anyway, let's get on with the review. And as some of you may know, uh, or could probably guess what the locomotive is, but it is a Batman or the Batman 9F. This is the latest one in the range, uh, which is heavily weathered, and is number 92233, which is officially a Somerset Dorset 9F. Uh, also, it comes with, um, believe it or not, a Pines Express headboard, which we'll see in a minute. But anyway, uh, so the uh, reason why the review is taking so long of, of this beautiful model, well, as you know, I've been having a lot of bad luck lately with brand new models. And this one was an, uh, was certainly uh, not an exception. Uh, and uh, basically, well, that one was an exception. Sorry, it did. Uh, it did. Um, it failed a number of times. The first one I had obviously didn't go. It was sent off back to Batman to be repaired, and it was and came back. But Batman didn't put the connecting rods uh, on there correctly, so they were flopping about everywhere. So I then sent it back again and asked for a total replacement considering this is probably one of the most expensive locomotives I've bought to date at nearly £130. Um, they're, well, they're, they retail for around that price but I got this one for £120 but it's still the most expensive single locomotive I've bought. And obviously you want it to work perfectly. So anyway, uh, yeah, so I've had six faulty locos so far. That's six faulty locos. That doesn't count the amount of times that they've had faults. <laughs> and this one has had three, so we're in double digits with faults on models at the moment. But four of those models are Batman. So Batman's quality control has really, really gone downhill uh, lately. But anyway, standard packaging as always. Oh, one thing I forgot, I'll just leave that there on its side a minute, is uh, a bit of history about the locomotive. As always, um, Batman have got a nice uh, bit of brief history about the uh, class on the back of the box. Uh, basically, the class was designed uh, by uh, Riddles, who designed all the standard locomotives for British Railways um, after nationalisation. You know, like the 3MT, the 4MT, th these are all the variants of the standard uh, class of locomotives, basically. So you've got the standard 3MT, standard 4MT, which has three types of 4MT, uh, standard 5MT, um, and there were also a number of uh, 3MTs as well. There were two variants of the 3MT. There was a 3MT tender as well. Um, and basically all of them, uh, the ones he designed, were MT, except for the 9F and uh, the austerities uh, built during World War II. Uh, now, there were two austerities. There was the 280, which I've got a funny feeling was, uh, which also Batman make, which I've got a funny feeling was an 8F. And then they have the, um, well, which was classed as the 8F, and then they have the then they have the 210 version which I think was classed as a 9F but um, everybody if you say 9F to anybody they will instantly think of the standard 9F uh, that he designed and according to this there were uh, 250 uh, locomotives built um, or I think there might be 251 I honestly don't know but according to the box it says the other 250 at the end sort of thing but there were but basically all the liver all the liveries applied to the locos uh, were uh, British Railways standard black, uh, you yeah, know, with the early or late emblem. You know, no lining; they're just plain black. And 250 of the class received this livery, except for one, which of course was Evening Star, as you know, um, the last locomotive ever built by British Railways. And uh, to prove how good the design was, um, she was a 9F. Um, and every, if you asked most railwaymen of the 50s and 60s uh, when these locomotives were introduced. They said that the locomotives, you know, they only had a very, 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 very short working life. Some of them only survived or worked for around 10 years. They hardly had a working life at all. I mean, Evening Star um, was the only locomotive, I, I heard in another review before, that uh, to be preserved before she was even, while she was being built. So yeah, they, they really, really had a short working life. And um, they, were, they were used quite often on the S&D. As I will mention a bit later in the review, um, you could tell which ones of the 9Fs are, uh, which 9Fs of the class were ran on the S&D as they all had a unique feature. Um, or, well, I wouldn't say it was a unique feature, but all of them that were assigned to the S&D had this feature. But anyway, they were really, really good workers on the S&D. 
and the drivers really, really came to love them. They said that if they were introduced when the S and D was, you know, you know, uh, back in the twenties and thirties, you know, they would have really, really loved them, sort of thing, because they they were the only locomotives that could haul trains unassisted over the the men dips, because most of the other engines, including seven Fs, had to have bankers or double headers to get up there, but the nine F could do it on its own. And Evening Star, uh, famously, uh, quite often, like a like number nine two two nine two two three here, hauled the Pines Express. And um, basically, uh, Evening Star holds the record for the, on the S and D for hauling the lo the heaviest uh, Pines Express unex unassisted over the S and D, and that was the last Pines Express uh, over the S and D. That was so. Uh, Evening Star, one of the members of the class, still holds that record. Anyway, on to the actual uh, model itself now. As you can just see through the packaging, beautiful weathering already, and. If I just slide her out of the famous ice cube packaging, as it's been come to know by everybody, we have quite a few detailing parts. Now we got, uh, oops, sorry, I'm not holding it in front of the camera. We got the cylinder cockets. We got uh, uh, you know, vacuum pipe brakes. We even got a free uh, chain link coupling. And there, oops, sorry, I'm not doing, I'm not looking at the screen properly. But here we are. We got a Pines Express headboard. So yeah, if you ever want to run the Pines Express with this model, there is a famous picture of her uh, with the Pines Express. Uh, you can recreate that sort of thing. I'm personally, what, what, what was that? Um, okay. Uh, I'm not sure if we just saw that, and I'm not sure if we just heard that, but something just fell out the model. So we're not getting off to a good start. I'll just retrieve that. And um, well, I think that's all that could be said for about for the model at the moment. But um, yeah, uh, beautiful model, but it appears uh, that this is my third model, as you know, a uh, variant because of the, the faults, and clearly uh, there may be another fault. So I'm just going to pick up that part which just fell off, and uh, I'll put her on the track. Right, uh, there she is on the track. Now before I get into detail, I've got to apologise for a few things. The first is the um, noise. You may hear some like flies buzzing around. Uh, that's because obviously you know, it was coming into winter and uh, all the all these bugs and creepy crawlies are coming inside and the flies have seemed to have uh, come into my loft which is really really annoying and they're buzzing around the bar lamp above my head so sorry about that buzzing. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's uh, crack on with the review. Now, uh, there's a bit of a disappointment to start with. Uh, as I mentioned in the, uh, you know, the previous part of this video where she was in the box, uh, I, I showed you something that appears to be something rattling around inside and uh, I found it and it appears to be this. I'm not sure if the camera will focus. Uh, here we go. Now, it's something definitely off the model, but I do not know what. You can see there's like a little lug on the end there, so it's supposed to be and a bit of glue mark, so it's supposed to be attached to something. What I honestly do not know, uh, but this is, you know, this is really, really just getting, you know, this is just, Batman is just really, really getting disappointed now, and um, as you know, I've had so many faults. I'm, I'm now up to six locos. Uh, this one alone, um, well, if I count with the number of faults per model, I'd be well into the double figures now, as this is the third fault I've had with this class. As you know, um, the first being it not working, the second being the rod was not put on correctly when it was repaired, and the third one being now that this is a replacement and they're finding this in the box and not knowing what the heck it is. Um, sorry it's gone out of focus, but what it appears to be, what I think it appears to be, is maybe one of the cab seats. Uh, so it was stuck in the cab like that. Uh, but I'm not sure because the cab seems to have both of these in still in the cab. But uh, this one appears to be very gluey and very split, so whether or not they accidentally dropped it in the box and put a new one in, or um, uh, at the factory, or whether or not this is just to off a totally different model and uh, accidentally fell in, but um, I honestly do not know what it is. Um, I thought it was one of those little boxes on the side of the tender there. Um, it appears not to be. Uh, sorry, the camera's a terrible focus here. I thought it was going to be something like that, but it doesn't appear to be. But um, if you have a 9F, and um, if you could examine it, maybe, and uh, do tell me what you think uh, this little bit is, because I'm, you know, a bit concerned now uh, with these models. But um, so yeah, that's gonna knock this model for marks. Uh, as much as I hate it, <laughs> as I hate uh, hate it to be, sort of thing. But anyway, let's get on with the detail. Now, uh, anyway, um, the overall uh, model is very, very, very stunning. I must admit that. Um, I mean, just uh, sorry if I got. <laughs> Hit my hand on the building there, but there we are. Oops, and a truck. <laughs> but there we go. 
we can see the front of the loco has been captured very, very well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, she is a, a Somerset Dorset loco, and she does come with the Pines Express headboard, as you've seen. Uh, so she typically is very, very heavily weathered, as she would have been on the Somerset and Dorset. And I think there's a great picture uh, of her. I'm not sure who took it, but I think it was Ivo Peters. I'm, I'm not 100%. There were other railway photographers on the Somerset and Dorset. But there's a great shot of her, I think, uh, pulling up a steep uh, incline, uh, one of the steep climbs on the S&D. And it's out of focus again. Oh, here we are. That's better. Um, you yeah, know, really, really going for it. Yeah, she was belting out black smoke with the Pines Express sort of thing, you yeah, know, in tow behind. So, yeah, she was really going for it sort of thing. But, yeah, brilliant detail for the model. You can see we've got the builder's plate down there. Uh, we've got the shed plate on the front there. I'm not sure if it's legible, but I presume. I'm honestly <laughs> not good with shed plates. but um, And also the camera's not good with shed plates, as you can see. But, um... I've got a funny feeling that it is the Bath Green Park um, shed plate there. Or one of the sheds on the S&D. But anyway, the, the linkage is just amazing. Um, and I, well, it, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling how they did it. But as you know, I have had two faults with it. So there are a few errors with this, getting this valve gear like this. But um, for this model, it appears to be running fine so far. But um, yeah, they've really, really done well. I mean, this is probably one of the best weathered models that I've, uh, you know, I well, the, one that I own, factory weathered models, and two, I think it's one of the best factory weathered models on the market, uh, along with the Hornby 8F, which I was really surprised with. But um, Batman have really, really gone, uh, gone all out with the weathering on this. I mean, you've got the staining on the cylinders, and all the even got even got the lime scale around there as well, as with the lime scale on the from the safety valves and the you know, the parts of the firebox. Um, another fault that apparently someone picked up on RM Web about this uh, 9F is that little tiny yellow dot. I'm so sorry about the camera today. The camera's not really playing ball, but uh, there's a, as you can see, there's a, a dot. There we are, a dot underneath the number. Uh, apparently, on the real loco, that's supposed to be blue, uh, but they've accidentally put it in yellow. But I'm not gonna, you know, I don't really care about that. You know, as long as the model runs fine and all the detailing bits are on it, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally, um, yeah, really, really happy with it. But um, as you can see, two of those faults have already gone wrong with this model. Um, the piping here is very, very intricate. Uh, I'm hoping that box is not off of there anywhere. Uh, but those pipes are very, very delicate and fragile, so I've got to be careful when moving, moving the engine about. But they've been very, very well captured by Batman. I must admit, the detail on this is just outstanding. Um, here's a view of the top of the engine. You can see the safety valves there. Um, also got the whistle down here. You've got the cab roof. I don't think that moves. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to try it out. <laughs> sort of things. I, I might damage it some more. Well, not, not as if I damaged it. The factory have done a pretty good job of that already. Um, <laughs> this this review is going to be very critical, I could tell. Um, anyway. The engine's also got rel relatively good uh, cab detail. Um, you can't really see it, but it's no, uh, it's not near the standard of the 7F or, the, or, or especially the 4F. It's nowhere near that standard, but there's a, a good amount of detail in there. Um, again, I'm, I'm probably not going to show you that because it took me quite a long time to try and get the uh, the uh, um, draw bar into the tender sort of thing. It was quite hard doing that. It's quite fiddly. You have to roll it over sort of thing and put it in through a little socket on there, like on the real loco sort of thing. And uh, well, not really like on the real loco, but yeah, anyways, a, there's a pin in there, and you have to sort of like uh, hook it around there, and it's quite complicated uh, fiddling about a bit. Uh, one thing I've got to mention is that this model has, uh, or this locomotive, has a double uh, a double blast pipe uh, chimney. Now this was um, one of the distinctive features about the 9Fs on the Sunset and Dorset, as they both have, uh, as all the Sunset and Dorset uh, 9Fs, the ones that were allocated to the Sunset and Dorset, have double uh, chimneys. Now uh, there are a few uh, foot, uh, bits of footage uh, by various f uh, filmers on the Sunset and Dorset and photographers. Um, well, if you call if you call it that sort of thing on the S and D, and there are a few shots and um, pictures of 9S with single um, uh, single chimneys. Now, this basically um, instantly says that, that engine is not a Sunset Endorser engine, and basically is just you know, being either rented out by the line or was um, you know, or just passing through. And uh, I think in some of the commentary and videos on the S and D um, uh, on these S and D videos you can find on YouTube, sort of thing. Um, actually, the commentator mentions that and says that. Um, you could tell which is the thoroughbred uh, um, you know, ones that were definitely allocated to the Sunset and Dorset and ones that were not. So yeah, that, that makes this model um, you know, proof that it's an S&D loco really. We move on to the tender now. We've got quite a bit of nice uh, tender detail there if it focuses. Um, 
and uh, yeah, you can see there's a bit of coal hanging out of the um, you know the coal chute sort of thing, which looks really really good, or whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm not very good. I've, I've, yeah, I've gone into that s silly thing with doing the review before um, you know looking up all the information. I suppose it's because I've been focusing on trying to get these models going really. But yeah, it's a quite a nice bit of uh, detail there. Not as you know, like I mentioned with the cab detail, not as good as uh, you know, up to date models as this model was. You know, I think it's nearly well. I think it's probably over five years old now, sort of thing. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely over uh, five years old now, sort of thing. So it's not bad for its age. Um, anyway, we got the um, oil around the uh, axle boxes on the tender as well for the weathering. Really, really good. Batman have done all out on this. Uh, this definitely done all out on this livery application for the the new this newest uh, 9F to the fleet, sort of thing, or to their range. The coal uh, doesn't look half bad. Um, it is again plastic coal, but it uh, the camera's uh, not doing it, uh, really doing it justice. It's making it look more plasticky than what it is. Uh, but um, it actually doesn't look too bad in the flesh. It is shiny, but then again, coal on locomotives tended to be uh, quite shiny, as they would water it down to stop dust from uh, you know getting into the cab, and you know, obviously um, you know, really you know, no one wants to breathe in coal dust. Really, if we move on to the back of the engine. God, this camera's really, really not playing ball today. Um, we've got the uh, beautiful de detail to the buffer beam again. Uh, we've also got the uh, another shed plate. Uh, or is that shed plate, or is that the? I think that's the 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 mark for the tender sort of thing, telling how many gallons of water it holds and stuff. No, the camera's not going to focus on it. Oh, 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 there we go. Yes, it's the um, it's the it's the um, uh, you know, it's five thousand gallon tender from what I can see from here because I'm looking through the screen go quite a distance away. Yeah, it's the mark for the tender that is. Also got the step ladder going up onto the back. But yeah, and also it's uh, obviously got the normal Batman small tension lock couplings. But yeah, overall, beautiful little model. So now uh, let's get her uh, moving. Now this is the part of the uh, review where I had trouble with the last one. Um, and basically, uh, you know, it, what the first one wouldn't move, the second one, the the, the valve gear, the, the basically the rods and the linkage were just flopping about everywhere because they weren't connected back up properly. But uh, this one, as you can see, runs very, very smoothly. Just give it a bit of speed. I have given her a, a good run in. I reckon she's done about 45 minutes of running already. So, but she's still, um, you know, running in. That's a good speed there, cruising speed. Anyway, you can now get a look at that beautiful linkage in action. So it's just about going behind the station. There you go. But yeah, that beautiful linkage in action there. She's uh, surprisingly quiet. She's uh, much quieter than my uh, 4F uh, when I first got it, but I must admit my 4F has now calmed down quite a lot, as you saw in my Compton Martin uh, update. No, not my Compton Martin update, but the Compton Martin exhibition video. She seemed to be running quite quietly on there. But this 9F is very, very quiet. Very sorry if the camera's a bit juddery. I've got it zoomed in full there. One problem I have noticed with the running of this particular model, uh, this one now, is it sometimes uh, finds a dead spot. Uh, I don't know what it is, but occasionally on certain laps, in certain areas, it will just like, you know, judder. Uh, I don't know what this is, if, whether this is um, some sort of pickup problem with the model, uh, but it um, appears to be running fine for this part of the uh, video sort of thing. But um, when I was running it in, um, whether it's not, whether or not it's uh, the running in has uh, solved it, but um, it seemed to, when it gets to certain points, it seemed to like, you know, pause, like a judder sort of thing, and like lose its momentum, sort of thing. But um, it seems to be running fine now.
Of course, in a minute, we'll get her on a, a beautiful uh, rake sort of thing to pull. Uh, of course, it'll be a Pint Express uh, rake. Not as big as the um, uh, one I had with the two double header 7Fs going. Um, as I've, I've got a, quite a bit of other rolling stock out and I'm a bit crammed for space at the moment. So I'm going to probably get um, at least a 7 coach rake on there sort of thing. To really test her out. I'll, have, um, I'll put four of those, hopefully four of those... Um, you know, your model railway village mark ones on there which are quite heavy so it really it will, it will really test her sort of thing but i i do hope when um the uh hornby released the railroad uh, mark ones which are well i'm not sure no one knows really the weight of them yet but they there are uh, i've all, I got two of the brake coaches on order to go with those uh model railway village coaches and hopefully they should be a bit lighter so they should you know get more of those in a train sort of thing and basically um Hoping to create a rake, and I'm sure she'll be pulling at uh, rakes of 10 and stuff, sort of thing, hopefully. But anyway, I'm going to pause the video here, and I'll show her hooking up to the rake very shortly. Right, now she's had a bit more of a run-in. We're going to couple her up to, the rake, uh, to a rake. Uh, and this rake, we've got seven uh, BR Maroon Mark 1s, uh, representing uh, Pines the Pines Express. Obviously not the full pines, because the pi full pines tended to be 12. I think it's longest. But we've got um, we got, we got seven. We've got a decent rake. Uh, we've got um, a one Batman break. Uh, we've got an, uh, another Batman. I think that's uh, open. Yeah, we've got an open. Then we got the Batman restaurant car. And then we got uh, four um, the, of those uh, 399 hatchet uh, Mark 1s. Which are not very, which are not bad value, as as you know uh, from my uh, little review I did of them, sort of thing. And they they represent corridors, uh, but they're all all good on there. So now we'll just slowly reverse her. Here she comes. Ah, uh, you can see where what I mean by she sometimes uh, stutters a bit. There, but here we go. Get going a bit faster, sort of thing. There you are, she's cobbled up to the rake. Anyway, let's get on with the ratings uh, for the model. Uh, packaging, uh, 10 out of 10. Very, very good packaging. The model sits in there perfectly. It's the, uh, as you saw earlier on. Uh, um, excuse me. <laughs> but then we got um, detail. Detail I would give a good uh, 9 out of 10. It's, uh, you know, it's getting on a bit, but it's really, really, really good amount of detail on there. And it's quite solid detail, apart from the little pipe under there, as you know. Uh, but it's very, very good solid detail, you know, it's not over the top fancy and very, very delicate, so it's quite rigid and uh, stuff, apart from that odd bit that fell off in the box. But, I'm, but then again, I'm not sure if that even came off the model, it might have been off of another one, because uh, it doesn't seem, to be, um, doesn't seem to fit in anywhere on the model, but please tell me if you know. Um, paintwork, oh, oh, yeah, well, livery, application and weathering, 10 out of 10, it's just got to be. I mean, the weathering and the livery application is just stunning. Running... Well, now this is where I'm going to be quite critical. I'm going to give her a seven. Um, this is purely because I've had two with faults, um, you know, and even this one sometimes it went in uh, on certain sections of the track seems to stall, as you just saw there. So I'm going to be quite critical there. Give her a seven. Haulage power. Well, I'm not going to give her a rating for haulage power yet, as you probably guessed. So you you could judge uh, by this short rake that she'd be hauling, but I'm sure she could haul haul much more. And uh, so. Overall, overall, I give this model. Uh, well, it's it's hard not to it's hard to give a, a decent rating for this because obviously I've had two faulty ones, and I know quite a few of you have bought this model first time, and it's been superb out of the box, nothing loose, and nothing. Well, and the model running first time, so I'm gonna be critical and give her um, a seven point five. So anyway, oh, and uh, obviously the Pines Express headboard, which is a nice added detail. So ten out of ten for added parts. <laughs> but anyway, um. Let's get some shots for running. Uh, there'll be the free MT with a, sh um, a short freight in the inner line. So anyway, uh, this has been SDJRSNF88 speaking, and uh, thanks for watching.